Say this out loud. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. But how can they hear without a preacher? Let's thank God for our preacher. God said something to me that really kind of messed me up, and, and I, I don't really want to mess with your theology, for, but, I, but I have to say this. So he said to me, he said, your next blessing is not coming directly from me. I said, well, Lord, what do you mean? He said, I sent everything you needed over 2,000 years ago. He said, the next blessing that you're about to receive is literally coming from your enemy. I said, well. I said, well, this doesn't, I said, how is that possible? Because the Bible says, when you catch a thief, when you find a thief, the thief has to pay it back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That means that principality that came up against your city is about to cough it up, spit it out, and release everything that he tried to eat up. Oh, Jesus. This means that that demonic spirit that tried to attack your house has got to cough it up, spit it out. Oh, no, no. We're, we're in a place right now where we are not just commanding or casting devils out. Before I cast you out, spit out my stuff and then leave my house. Before I cast it out, you got to give me back everything you stole. Now, there are many of you that are about to get your joy back because the enemy tried to steal it. There are others that are about to receive mega financial breakthroughs because the enemy stole from you. Now, listen, I can remember where I was praying because my family, we had lost a house. This was years ago. And I said, God, my, my parents uh, were pastors for many years. I said, Lord, we've been faithful in the assignment. My, my parents have served faithfully. I've seen them give their last to others. I have seen them pour out. How would you allow them to lose this house that, that was our family home? Why? How would you let that happen? And I went through a period where uh, those years ago I was kind of frustrated and upset. I knew I couldn't really be mad with God, but I didn't understand what was taking place. And sometimes there is no explanation for a thing entering into your field but the Bible does say that when you find it you got to name that thief and it's got to get back now fast forward some years later all of a sudden uh, I had never gotten a prophetic word for this I've received many prophetic words but this was very different all of a sudden out of a season a real estate business was birthed in my life and I was saying okay God what do you what do you want to do he said I'm about to restore back to you for everything that you lost for every house for every every piece of land and literally I watched like every three months the Lord was giving me a new house every few months the Lord was giving me a new property every few months there was something else coming and, and I was saying this is unusual and what the Lord said to me is this is back to back acquisitions you've come into a season where every time you turn around I'm going to cause you to reap from what that thief tried to steal from you back then now, why am I sharing that testimony? Because it's about to happen in somebody's life in this room. You're coming into a place of back-to-back -back acquisitions. Literally for the past few years, every few months, the Lord does some kind of land miracle. And it was happening uh, in 2020, right when we were in the middle of chaos in, in uh, Minneapolis, battling for that region. When all of the stuff had broken out and we were seeing so much happen and stuff was being set on fire. I lived 10 minutes from where that was happening. And I literally couldn't go to my grocery stores because everything was burned. Everything was destroyed. And we were saying, God, what? is going on and we took to the streets and begin to pray there's something about a church that knows when you're needed outside of the four walls and you're not afraid to leave the comfort of where you are 
And so we left uh, our, our building and we started feeding people, just anybody that we could. We were buying up groceries from the suburbs and bringing them in uh, to the city and just giving out. And then all of a sudden, ministry started taking place right there. There were people that uh, said, we need prayer. We didn't even have to ask them for prayer. Uh, did they want prayer? But they said they needed it. And then people started getting saved right there on the streets. And one after the other, after the other, after the other. And the Lord had given me at the time this uh, strategy. He said, I want you to stand on the land. And he said, I want you to get salt and you're going to pour it into the ground. And so I stood there. There were news cameras all around, CNN, any kind of secular news media you could imagine was there. But I began to pour salt in front of everybody and prophesy that the curse is being broken off of the land in Minneapolis. Come on, somebody. And so the Lord said to me, he said, the demonic altars are being torn down in this region. And I'm prophesying it right here in this city that the demonic altars are being torn down now. So we took salt and poured it. We poured the salt into the ground and prophesied. And people didn't know what was going on, but they just stood there watching. And then we took oil and we poured oil into the ground and began to prophesy that the anointing is breaking the yoke, destroying the yoke. And then we took wine and began to pour it into the ground as a symbol of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's coming. Literally, when we did this, the baptisms began to multiply. We saw so many people coming up, getting saved and baptized. It was so powerful that there were people there, a part of the news or press, that came up to me with tears saying, I've been trying to stay unbiased in this, but I want to be baptized baptized as well I'm telling you God said revival yes and then and, and then in my in my city I look like many of the Muslims that are there in my city so I said I'm gonna use this to my advantage and so they gathered around while they saw me baptizing. Now, I was just standing in front of the baptismal pool when nobody was being baptized and a crowd just gathered and people started getting saved in the crowd. And so the Muslims began to come up and they were looking at me almost mocking, saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? But the prophetic anointing was so strong, I turned to the Muslims and just started prophesying. I said, the Lord's showing me this vision of a man. This is how he looks. I described him. I said, this is like either your father uncle and the Lord said he has a heart condition and God says he's going to heal his heart condition as a sign that Jesus Christ loves you listen he turned to me and he said how do you know this? He said, my uncle has a heart condition. He said, who told you? I said, these are the words of Jesus Christ to you. See, you've got to understand that some seeds, sometimes you are planting seeds. Sometimes you are watering seeds, but it's God that gives the increase. And the Lord's about to transform this city. He's about to transform this region. But let me finish this, and, and I'm turning it over. Listen, in, in Joel chapter 2, so it says this. He says, I'm going to restore the years back to you that you lost. Not a day, not months, years. See, he can remember stuff that you can't remember. He's thinking of things that you haven't even thought of. And so he says, I'm restoring the years that uh, the crawling locust, that the consuming locust, that the chewing locust. It says, my great army that I sent among you. He said, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. That's a promise over your life. And then he says, then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God. Now, verse 28, this is what you read all the time. You quote it. And it says, and it shall come to pass after this. Somebody say after this. 
We've been telling people, your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. But what we forgot is the ten other verses before that. God says that before I bring that outpouring, I'm going to refresh my people. He said before I bring that kind of revival, he said get ready for me to restore years back to you. Get ready for me to pour the wine, the oil, the grain. Everything is about to come. But you're going to see an after this kind of moment. We've been trying to skip verses and go to 28. He says, you want the revival? He said, then step into my restoring power in your life. He says, I'm going to restore you so that you can go and pour out to them. We've been saying, God, send it. We need it. And the Lord's saying, I'm trying to calculate some stuff for you first before I send it to the world. See, because real revival is for the church. Because how could you be revived unless you were alive and then died and then came back? Revival is not really for the world. Awakening is for the world. They're sitting in darkness and they need to see light. But God says, I'm reviving my church. Over the past couple of years, we have been seeing God revive dead churches. And so as we're here tonight, as a prophetic declaration, we're going to see God begin to restore churches that have begun to crumble in this city. We're declaring it and we're prophesying it that those churches, Churches are about to come back alive in the spirit. They're going to be restored. And then we're going to see the outpouring in the world. Come on, everybody. Stand on your feet very quickly. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing stirring so strong. My time is up. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Let the sound be heard. We stand and declare over this nation that we are coming through our night season. That we are not going to be stuck in the midst of transition. But we declare that the government is on the shoulders of Christ. We decree that our cities will be transformed. That America is going to see transformation. And there's going to be a breakout of revival and awakening in our cities. We contend for it now in the name of Jesus. We contend for it now. We call forth the souls, the souls and the harvest. They're coming forth in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody send up praise in this place. Say this out loud. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. But how can they hear without a preacher? Let's thank God for a preacher. <laughs> 